Good morning, everyone. Welcome, especially on this long weekend holiday. My name is Katina Michael, and I'm from the University of Wollongong in Australia. It's a privilege to be here with you on this weekend. Uh, I was here in Ottawa celebrating Canada Day in 2000 with style in Ottawa. Uh, I really enjoyed the Canadian uh, experience. I was here for about four months. And I have to say, Canadians and Australians share a lot in common. The forum today addresses a topic that is increasingly becoming important. I feel that the discussion surrounding unmanned aerial vehicles or unmanned aerial, aerial systems or in the common language drones is one that needs to happen right now. In Australia, we're just beginning this discussion. We also need to understand the implications and even anticipate implications uh, that haven't come into the fore yet. A bit about my background. I'm a senior member of the IEEE and I'm also the chief editor of the IEEE Technology and Society magazine. And over the last four days, we hosted the annual symposium of technology and society just across at the University of Toronto. The conference was about wearable technologies, not drones, but there were a lot of talks on drones. It seems that wearables and embedded sensors of different types, UAV systems, even satellite systems have a lot of things in common. They all take images and video footage. The IEEE has what you call your garden variety engineers in different areas, whether it be mechanical, civil, electrical, telecommunications or otherwise. But we also have affiliate members that come from a diverse range of backgrounds, even th areas like anthropology, sociology, criminology, philosophy and so much more. I have to thank initially Alexander Hayes, Susanna Sabine, Matthew Schroyer, Jai Galliott and Rob Manson as we came together to talk about the need for a discussion because of what was happening in the Australian landscape. And we thought, why not take it to a part of the world that has probably the best grapple with what is occurring in the UAV space, that being Canada. So we got in touch with Avna Levin, whom I've known since 2006, and said, Avna, what do you think? He said, let's do it. What's special about this day? It's an open forum. We want public consultation. We want stakeholder view types. We want life world depictions and impressions. Then we got in touch with speakers who were forthcoming. Avner himself, Ian Hanna and Andrew Clement. When I used to work for Nortel Networks in pre-sales engineering uh, in the mid-90s, I came first in, in, in first-hand view of new imaging systems. I worked a lot with mapping and geographic information systems. And I entered the workforce at a time that people were actually measuring distances on their screens using string and that if scales changed on the screen because they used PowerPoint or draw, they would have to redo the whole image. And I'm talking about here topography and cartography and administrative boundaries and political boundaries. So when you build networks, you need to know where you're going to lay the cables. You need to know where you're going to put the, sat the, the, um, the nodes, for example, the mobile switching centers and so forth. You need to understand congestion. You need to understand uh, dimensions, regions, uh, polygons, lines and points. So here I was purchasing satellite data. They, they came in tiles, very expensive satellite data at the time. And I was matching that with vector-based images. These are uh, topographic maps that you can purchase that are registered to the longitude and latitude of the Earth's surface. And I was also overlaying that with registered raster images that I would take from anything I could find and I would overlay these things in layers in the GIS system. I was able to sit at my office in Wollongong and conduct incredibly detailed network planning in places like the Philippines without stepping foot in the Philippines. 
In fact, I knew the geography of the Philippines much better than even the locals did. And I can still to this day quote to you actual uh, network maps uh, that we crossed through different uh, topologies. I, find, I found that astounding at the time, absolutely astounding. I could do desk studies from my office so far away and I had better knowledge than even the locals did. And at times, I remember a study in Taiwan uh, when I was looking at Sinchu City and I went to the client site and presented my, my uh, results and I said, no, Sinchu City is not the ex largest city in, in Taiwan and it's not going to be where the greatest demand for, for technology will be and for bandwidth. And then I said, how do you figure that? Let me show you my methodology. Let me show you the evidence. The rest is history. The team stopped using string to measure things on the, on the screen and move quickly to adopt thousands upon thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of GIS data. The big thing was when we hit places like North Korea and South Korea, and I mentioned South Korea here, I did a study for Onzi Telecom, for example, whereby I had to get data, geodemographic data, from the actual um, suppliers in South Korea. I got in touch in 1998 with them uh, when I needed to do this study, and I said, can I have your uh, data? Uh, who are you? Why do you want the data? I, I work for Nortel Networks, and I'm in telecommunications, and I need the data because we are providing some consulting services to a client. After weeks of negotiation, the answer came back that we were not eligible to access the data because it was too sensitive. That is a true story. In 2009, after entering academia uh, in the early 2000s, I completed a transnational crime degree and at the same time became a member of the Australian Privacy Foundation. It's one of the oldest privacy foundations in the world, if not the oldest, uh, spanning 25 years. The context is that UAVs are not new in their entirety. Look, I've just shown you, I was working with images long ago. Something had to take those images. Something had to take those uh, vector and, and raster images. Uh, and it's very much uh, embedded in mobile um, network planning and, and so forth. But the issues I had to quickly grapple with uh, when I moved from being a user of these images to a um, advocate for, un for maintaining that these uh, systems would be used in the right way uh, through my uh, education in a Masters of Transnational Crime changed my outlook. So I hope this forum is about continuing dialogue in Canada and creating new dialogue in Australia. We bring you together to hear your different voices. You all come from different life worlds. You are different stakeholder types and you have had first person experiences that are different to probably every person in this room. Here we are all on equal footing today and I hope you contribute all that you can in this open environment and that you gain insight as you go away and go back into your workplaces, go back into uh, public discussion uh, with uh, UAV systems. Two housekeeping things. <laughs> First is that we are recording the audio of the day because we're going to be transcribing the day and hoping to have a white paper coming out of this discussion. The second thing is that we are video recording only the speaker sessions and not the unstructured forums, okay? That's very important to note. And that we will be in this room uh, for the next two talks, and then we are moving for Ian Hanna's talk into the main uh, classroom area where we will discuss our, um, our presentation and go through our unstructured forum. So I welcome you, and I thank you for coming, and I introduce Ramona Pringle, our facilitator today.